Hi, I'm Emma Rich, Senior Smart Grid Analyst at GTM Research, and I'm here with uh, Jake Rossweiler from OnRamp. Hello. I wanted to see if you could maybe start out the conversation today by giving me an idea of uh, the state of the communications market in Smart Grid. Well, the state of the communications market in Smart Grid, I would say, is somewhat fragmented in that if you look globally, um, there are many players in the mid-mile, last-mile space, and in Smart Grid, as you look Domestically, you have STAR, RF Mesh, um, as well as PLC systems. And those don't necessarily translate to uh, the same globally. Mm -hmm. OnRamp's in a position where we have a communications technology, a STAR topology, that really is a global platform. And so one of the things that we're proud of is that we've developed this communications platform that provides underground capability, long-range cap long capability, battery-powered capability, that is a global platform for smart grid. The DOE provided um, OnRamp with a grant for its communications for, for underground usage. Mm -hmm. um, what's, what's your experience been like so far uh, with, with developing those solutions for utilities? Um, well, first of all, we're very excited about that DOE grant. We're partnered with uh, Sandy Gas and Electric and SoCal Edison, and uh, our field partners are Schweitzer and GridSense to provide under, underground feeder monitoring. Uh, the program has been um, it's been a good one for us. It's also been a good one for the utilities in that it helps us characterize and, and look at um, the, the, trade, the trade space as to what the challenges are for covering those underground locations, uh, looking at the RF environment, characterizing that of what are, what are the challenges and uh, the ways that on-ramp can service that, uh, that area cost effectively with a minor amount of infrastructure. So the project is moving along uh, quite nicely. We've, we're going through the trade study right now. We've characterized the RF, and we're now getting into a deployment phase. We're actually going to be demonstrating the benefits that we're seeing in our overhead FCI and uh, transform monitoring solutions. We're going to see that underground, where uh, you're going to provide advanced not not advanced notification, but better notification of outages, um, because today that is typically done an outage and then send a truck roll to to isolate the problem. And then you have to get into, you know, if there's water or other, uh, other substances in there, they have to be evacuated. It becomes a real challenge from a traffic management perspective, a cost perspective, and a time perspective to restore these. And with the near real-time identification of these challenges, you can isolate the problem uh, more quickly and also improve the Acadian safety metrics for the utility. Uh, by being able to restore quickly. There's a promise of one communications technology being able to serve the needs. Um, there really is this realization that it does take a network of networks to satisfy all the challenges for underground, hard to reach locations. And utilities, I think, are going to move from deploying individual communications networks to understanding what communications technologies work the best for their specific use case. How does OnRAM's technology help utilities deal with um, non-interoperable or, or proprietary networks that they might already have for SCADA or, or existing utility systems? I think one of the key focuses uh, that, that we always look at is making sure that, you know, with the data plane uh, in the enterprise, that the, the, network, the communication network is really agnostic. It's really a plug and play that if you have a Wonderware, if you have an MDMS system, um, if you have an OMS or DMS system, the data presentment to those uh, is transparent to the technology. And so what we really focus on is having a standards-based interface to all those enterprise systems so that the utility doesn't have to worry about how they're going to do the back office integration. We, we, our solution has that built in, so it's very much in, it very easily integrates into their enterprise. Is that something utilities are telling you is important, interoperability between systems? Uh, they're telling us it's the, what's very important is the data interoperability because each communication technology has, has uh, different attributes. Uh, the key thing is really elevating from the interoperability of the individual uh, radio technology itself to interoperability of data. Uh, they've learned, what we've seen is that utilities have learned that it is a challenge to do the integration. It's one thing to deploy the network, it's another thing to integrate the data. And at the end of the day, the utility is really looking for information. Deploying a communications network is a means to that end. They don't, they're not building a communication system because they just want to build communications. They really are building that to get the information that's meaningful to them in a timely manner so that they can do analytics and, and drive optimization improvements in their grid. So the key focus and one of the key things that we hear from utilities is 
you can go through and present all of the technology attributes of the system. How you made it easy and uh, mitigate my risk that I can do this integration, get the data in a useful manner, uh, most easily in my back office. A lot of other technologies, communications technologies in the space, were adapted from other uh, other technologies, other trade spaces, other industries, and then there was bolted on from an application or the higher levels in the stack the ability to serve this machine-to-machine -machine space. We really designed a communications from the ground up that. Uh, has security built in, reliable delivery at the fine MAC layer, designed for uh, low power, long range coverage, distributed assets. Utilities don't have a lot of communication towers they can leverage. They need to use a few amount of towers to cover a large amount of assets and underneath those towers, very high capacity. All those are built into our patented technology. And uh, what we find is that with a very little amount of infrastructure, at one tenth to one one hundredth the amount of collectors that would be need, needed for other systems, we're able to provide that coverage in very high capacity. And then when there is need for battery-powered devices, we're able to serve those. The security is built in, and then the solution integrates all the way from the radio node in the field all the way to the back office. What are the biggest challenges utilities are facing in communications? I think one of the biggest challenges is that there's you know, the haves and the have-nots. The utilities that uh, did receive funding through the DOE grant are a very small set, you know, 100 out of 3,000. And a lot of the ones that have been focusing or been deploying AMI have been the larger utilities that tend to be a little bit more suburban or urban. Makes it a little bit easier to use uh, mesh technologies to, to cover their assets. If you look at where the, the gap is for utilities, a lot of those are rural mun and municipal utilities that their assets are more dispersed, uh, their, their funding is a little bit tighter, and it makes it more challenging for them to be able to get, gain some of the same benefits and implement a solution that uh, some of the ones that receive funding have. Uh, with OnRamp, given our, the low cost of our technology and the long range or long coverage range of the solution, we can, a we can support the high capacity that's in, that exists in a large urban center, as well as the dispersed rural utilities that have very few assets distributed at very few meters per mile. Great. Well, thank you for joining us today, Jake. Thank you for having me.